Disney and Pixar's Elemental, A Little Golden Book. Many years ago, two fire people named Bernie and Cinder moved to Element City for a better life. It wasn't easy. The elements who lived there, fire, water, earth, and air, didn't always mix. Bernie and Cinder opened a shop in Firetown where they displayed the blue flame, a symbol of their homeland and traditions. Soon they had a daughter named Ember. Ember developed a talent for sculpting sugar and glass and had a fiery personality. When her father retired, she would take over the shop, but she needed to control her temper first. Today was the shop's red dot sale. If Ember could calmly run the sale, she would prove to her father that she was ready. But soon after the doors opened and eager customers rushed in, Ember's temper flared. Ember dashed to the basement and exploded with anger. Her emotional eruption caused pipe to burst. Water sprayed everywhere. Ember managed to plug the leak, but the basement was flooded. Suddenly, Wade, a water person and a city inspector, appeared from the water. He had been sucked into the basement through the gushing pipe. He surveyed the mess and burst into tears. There were so many code violations. He wrote up a bunch of tickets and left. The shop could be shut down. Ember had to stop Wade. Ember caught up to Wade at City Hall, but he had already sent the tickets to Fern in the processing department. Ember explained how important the shop was to her father. Wade agreed to help. They tried to convince Fern to tear up the tickets, but Ember's temper flared again, and whoosh! Fern's office went up in flames. The shop was doomed. Ember and Wade went to an airball game to find Wade's boss, Gail. They hoped she would forgive the tickets. Gail told them there was a leak somewhere in the city. If Wade and Ember could find the source and fix it, Gail would forget about the tickets. But if they failed, Bernie's shop would be shut down. While searching for the leak, Ember spotted Garden Central Station. She told Wade that her father had taken her there as a child to see the unique Vivisteria flowers, but they were denied entry because their fire was too dangerous. The building had flooded a few years later, so Ember had never gotten to see the flowers. Just then, Wade spotted a broken gate near a canal, the source of the leak. Ember and Wade temporarily blocked the gate with some sandbags, but those wouldn't hold the water for long. At the beach, Ember and Wade filled more sandbags. While they worked, Ember worried about her father's shop. What if she failed? And what would Bernie think of her spending time with a water person? Wade noticed that the sand beneath Ember had melted and turned into glass. She picked up the glass and shaped it into a vivisteria flower. Suddenly, Ember realized how they could fix the leak. Back at the gate, she melted the sand to create a glass dam. It sealed the doors. The next night, Ember visited Wade and his family. She impressed everyone by turning a broken glass pitcher into a work of art. Afterward, they played the crying game. Players tried to make their opponents cry using only words. During Wade's turn, he told Ember how much he cared about her. A teardrop rolled down Ember's cheek. And Wade won. Just then, Gail called. The leak was fixed. The shop was saved. Before they left, Wade's mother encouraged Ember to be an intern for her friend's glassmaking company. How exciting. But what about her father's shop? Back at home, Bernie announced that he was finally retiring. Ember would run the shop. Her light dimmed. She couldn't disappoint her father. Ember had to say goodbye to her chance of becoming a glassmaker, and goodbye to Wade, too. But Wade had a surprise for her. He took her to the entrance of a flooded tunnel where Gail was waiting. Gail blew a huge bubble in the water, and Ember jumped inside. Wade took Ember to see the Vivisteria flowers at the flooded Garden Central Station. Ember's light made the flowers bloom. It was a magical evening, but it wasn't enough to make Ember choose Wade over her family. They had sacrificed so much to leave their home and come to Element City. At the grand opening of Ember's fireplace, Bernie passed the blue flame to his daughter. Suddenly, Wade appeared and encouraged Ember to tell Bernie how she really felt about taking over the shop. Then Bernie discovered it was Ember who had burst the pipes. To make matters worse, Wade told Ember that he loved her. Ember was torn between what her heart wanted and her sense of duty to her family. She asked Wade to leave. Bernie took back the blue flame from Ember. He would no longer retire. Heartbroken, Ember drove away, glancing back at Element City in the distance. A glint of light there caught her attention. It was a piece of glass from her dam. It had broken, and a giant wave was rushing toward Firetown. She raced home to warn everyone. The blue flame was in the shop. Ember jumped inside just as Wade arrived to help. Together, they saved the precious heirloom, but the dangerous waters flooded the shop. 
trapping Wade and Ember in a small room. Ember's heat made Wade boil, and he began to evaporate. I love you, Wade, Ember said. They hugged goodbye. Wade was gone. Ember's family dug through the debris and rescued her. She finally admitted that the shop was her father's dream, not hers. Bernie told Ember that the shop was never the dream. Ember was the dream. Suddenly, a single drop of water fell into a bucket. Ember remembered the crying game. She spoke all the words that had made Wade cry then. The water drops fell harder. Ember's parents joined in the game. And before long, Wade was back. He embraced Ember. Her light had never burned brighter. Soon, Ember got an internship at the best glass design company in the world. She and Wade were leaving Element City for an exciting new life married together. Ember waved goodbye to their families. She was finally following her own dreams and her heart. Support the authors and publishers of this book by buying your own copy. Subscribe for more stories.